What's cracking, family? T Money. Down in the dungeon. Uh, it's Friday night. Finally, just sitting down to do a video. Um, yeah, I got a big stack of stuff in this week. So let's do this. I'm probably going to do like weekly videos from now on. Um, save everything for the end of the week. I think that's a good. Uh, it's not too much, not too little type of deal. So, uh, yeah, so let's get right down to this. Uh, after work today, I actually went over to my local Goodwill and, uh, they had a few things. Um, they had like Monsters, Inc., the Disney movie. They had, um, the, it was like the three disc, uh, Blu-ray set. Um, and Hocus Pocus. They had a few things. Uh, but I decided, cause our, my Goodwill is really expensive. I always am like blown away by those who, um, claim their Goodwills, like, two dollars for blu-rays and stuff like that mine is usually like a minimum of three dollars but usually in like the seven three five ten dollar range so uh you know i just i thought about buying a few of the things but i just decided not to just because ten bucks is pretty steep uh even for a blu-ray so uh or for a used blu-ray at goodwill so what i did grab is um planet earth this is a great series. I remember watching this when it first came out. And, um, yeah, it's just pretty amazing stuff. Uh, so I grabbed that. This was 10 bucks, but I looked on Amazon and it goes for more than that. So I figured I wanted it enough to, uh, buy it. And, and unfortunately, uh, I looked at it, the discs when I got home because my Goodwill usually puts like a piece of tape over it. So you can't even look. Um, and yeah, I don't understand how you can scratch a Blu-ray, but there's like a bunch of scuff marks all over this. So that kind of sucks. But, uh, this was pretty awesome find, uh, the Looney Tunes golden collection, volume three, uh, four, four disc set. Um, I grew up with this show, obviously I feel like a lot of kids did. So special, I was thinking about this recently too, wanting to grab it. And, um, yeah, let me know if there's a Blu-ray of the Looney Tunes collection available because this is volume three and there's, I think four volumes. Um, but it'd be nice to have them all on Blu-ray and like one complete collection, uh, because this is a big box set and it's only one volume. So, um, but yeah, classic stuff, Looney Tunes. Uh, so let's get into some of the DVDs I grabbed, uh, Mermaid Down. A couple of these are, um, Horace Ball recommendations from his, uh, Horny's award show this year. So I grabbed this one, um, another mermaid type horror movie about this, uh, mermaid that gets washed up on sea and she ends up in this hospital and, um, I don't know, like the doctors or, or whatever, uh, start treating her poorly. And then she kind of like tries to fi figure out how to escape. I'm not sure, but it's a horror movie. So, um, we'll check it out. Mermaid down. Then we have this. I'm actually really excited to check this out. This is Freak from uh, Lucky Sarudi, indie filmmaker. Uh, I had ordered this, and um, I got it actually pretty quickly. I ordered this one and a movie called Variant uh, from another indie director. And um, this is an indie slasher movie from 2020. It sounds really good. I actually watched um, Don't Sleep in the Woods tonight i think is what it's called something like that i showed it off in my last update and i loved it i thought it was great uh it was a horror's ball recommendation it was just a really fun quirky polish slasher so shout out to you heroic waffles if you're watching this it is a indeed a polish slasher slasher movie um but it just threw me off because they didn't have any accents or anything but sometimes that's not the case i guess uh but anyways similar to that in premise we have some sort of like deformed Freak living in the woods, so it's basically a backwoods slasher, but it's indie, and uh, I'm stoked to check it out. It um, It's a hushed legend becomes all too real for a group of friends heading out for a weekend of camping and partying, so that's really cool. Stoked on that. Can't wait to check it out. Another one of Horrors Ball's recommendations from 2020, The Dark Red. Don't really know much about this film. Can't really remember uh, the synopsis, but it says a solid entry into the childbirth related horror subgenre. 
bolstered by Billingsley's riveting performance. And okay, a young woman is committed to a psychic hospital claiming that her newborn has been abducted by a secret society called the Dark Red, an ancient underground cult that harvests and controls an incredibly rare blood type that gives one the power to hear and guide another person's thoughts. She says that she's special, that she carries a pure and powerful strain of the blood like nothing seen before, and the society sees her and her child as its next evolution, or perhaps its greatest threat, should she turn against them. Uh, is Dark Red entirely a figment of her imagination, a complex coping mechanism to overcome a terrible personal strategy, or is there some truth behind her story? So, sounds good. Might be a slow burn, but uh, sorry for reading that. I know some people don't like me reading synopsises, but once I get going, I feel like I gotta finish. Uh, another one from the Horrors Ball uh, 2020 um, uh, award uh, nominee, uh, Game of Death. Um... <clears throat> says it's a slick and uproarious horror comedy where it's killer be killed in a heavy in a heady celebration of uh, schlocky violence and over the top gore. So sounds good. A lot of movies like this, but uh, a bunch of people playing a game of cat and mouse or whatever, uh, a game of death, if you will. Um, and yeah, uh, yeah. So actually, it's a board game that these kids start playing, and then once they start playing the board game, it becomes all too real. But uh, can't wait to check it out. Monstrous. Uh, this one was mentioned in the uh, horrors. Uh, but I don't think he had seen this one. Uh, but I love me some Bigfoot movies, so I had to grab this. And I feel like I'm having a deja vu. I have so many Bigfoot movies that I feel like I may have purchased this before, but I don't remember. Uh, but yeah, I started watching this last night. It's fun. Um... The Bigfoot looks kind of cool, uh, and yeah, I just love any sort of uh, atmospheric, um, uh, what's it called, like wilderness, Bigfoot type movie, so uh, wilderness slasher, I guess, but just with a Bigfoot, so awesome. All right, now we'll get into some Blu-rays, got a couple um, Bill Creek releases like Father Like Son, I haven't seen this movie in years, but I remember it being pretty fun comedy. Um, and then we have uh, Blind Fury, starring Rutger Hauer. Can't wait to check this one out. Never seen it before. Um, yeah, and I I think this one is like a long-awaited, highly anticipated Blu-ray release. I think it had a DVD that was long out of print, maybe. Uh, cool. Then I got a couple titles from Dark Side releasing. Uh, that indie Canadian company I mentioned a few times before. Mask of Thorn. Cover artwork got me on that one. It looks really cool. Um, but, um, kind of a weird synopsis, uh, but, um, uh, this girl, Bethany, is the target of a local urban legend known as Thorn, and tonight he has returned for her, so, I don't know, <laughs> we'll see, uh, and then this is a, uh, a, um, <laughs> a, rehab themed uh anthology film i am an addict so immediately caught my attention i am an addict is a balls out horror film that was conceived and produced in portsmouth uk the film is the debut feature film from rob ulitsky in collaboration with a team of both local and international crew in this terrifying horror anthology an anachronistic anachronistic public access tv channel hosts a self-help guru with one goal to shock viewers out of their addictions and bizarre obsessions with frightening consequences so sounds pretty uh unique um so yeah we'll check it out a uh, uh addiction themed an anthology horror movie um and then monstrous disunion is the last one the orwellian future of something 2021 interesting um yeah, this one was pretty cool. About a girl who returns home from a uh, university and um, her parents are fucking nuts and amongst all that chaos, uh, there's these killer pig monsters. Uh, I guess just maybe dudes wearing pig masks, uh, murdering people in the streets. So, monstrous disunion. We'll see. All right, this one I actually grabbed from Walmart because I, I was browsing Walmart actually. Uh, I grabbed a steelbook and it came up uh, as something I might be interested in, and cover artwork kind of just drew me in. Um, 
you know, supernatural themed horror movie by the name of Fingerprints. And I actually, uh, I went on Amazon to see if I could find it for cheaper and it's pretty much out of print. I'm, I'm pretty sure. And I bought the last, uh, copy from Walmart. So, uh, that was cool. But yeah, supernatural thriller, troubled teenager sets out on a grisly path to discover the disturbing truth behind a well-known urban legend. Um, so it's a tale of a train colliding with a school bus, killing all the children aboard. I feel like I've heard that before in a small town. Uh, but yeah, so we have fingerprint, a ghost story, fingerprints. All right. And then we got a couple arrow video titles or one actually, well, yeah, two, uh, G S J S A, sorry, uh, joint security area. Um, uh, it's by, uh, Parchan Wu or however you pronounce his name, director of old boy. Uh, this actually predates Old Boy, and um, says before Old Boy, the handmaiden visionary filmmaker Park Chan Wu helmed this gripping tale of deceit, misunderstanding, and senseless sen and the senselessness of war. So, sounds cool. Uh, yeah, I love I loved Old Boy, and I love uh, war films. So, uh, and then Southland Tales. I was kind of debating whether or not I was going to swoop this one up, to be honest. Uh, but I feel like this one had been announced for so long. Um, they were putting like the little J card thing inside the, um, release arrow video releases for like years now. And we finally got it out, but, uh, never seen it. Heard it's pretty bad. Uh, but, uh, Dwayne Johnson, Sean William Scott, Sarah Michelle Geller, Southland Tales. Uh, it's directed by Richard Kelly. I think maybe not. I guess it doesn't matter who directed this, but it's two disc, uh, new 2K4, uh, sorry, 2K restoration of the film. Um, and it is, so it's the director of, yeah, Richard Kelly, Donnie Darko. So, uh, this movie is from, I want to say like 2000, maybe 2006. Um, so yeah, if any of you guys have seen this one, let me know your thoughts. I've kind of heard mixed things on it, but not really my, uh, genre per se, but all right, one more Arrow video. We have the Gamera Heisa Trilogy. Didn't really need this, but figured I'd swoop it up uh, for the collection. Maybe watch this rather than my big, big box set. Um, but, yeah, I always get sucked into the Arrow video releases in general. So, um, yeah. Trilogy of films is three films, obviously. Uh Gamera, the Guardian of the Universe, Gamera 2, Lack of Attack of Legion, and Disc 3, Gamera, Revenge of Iris. I honestly, I'll be honest with you guys, I don't really know anything about the whole Gamera uh, series. It's not really my subgenre either. Um, but we'll check it out, you know. Uh, see, I got that huge box set. Eventually, probably check it out. But yes, finally we have the 4K of They Live. Need I say anything about this movie? Love it. Um, but yeah, I'm excited to check this one out. See how it looks in 4K. It's kind of a cool movie for 4K, I think. Um, but yeah, I did grab the poster and everything. But yeah, I have so many Scream Factory posters I need to sell if anybody's interested. Uh, I have so many. I know I've mentioned that before, but too many. They're just like stacked in my closet. And I just... I'm a hoarder when it comes to movies. And I feel like I can't get rid of them. But in reality, I'm never ever going to hang up all those Scream Factory posters, so I just don't have the room. I'm already maxed out as it is, so uh, cool, though, nonetheless. Um, and last but not least, I actually have one other cool thing to show you guys, but uh, controversial film, of course, a Serbian film. It's been a while since I've seen this, but I remember not really being into it. It was just weird. Um, kind of made me feel a little uncomfortable, which is hard to do, honestly. Uh, but I'll check it out again. Uh, this is a nice release from uh, Un Unearthed Films. And I think they're putting out like a longer extended version, which has got like hours upon hours of uh, extra footage. Um, so that's coming out later this year. But for now, the standard uh, release of a Serbian film. Craziness. Last but not least, I just want to show you guys this. I got this a couple weeks ago, actually, and I forgot to show it off. But uh, it is from Make Flicks, and it is the, excuse me, Dry Mouth. Six pack shot on video um, deal here. We have six movies Kingdom of the Vampire, Chick Boxer, Galaxy of the Dinosaurs, Zombie Cop, Maximum Impact, and Humanoids from Atlantis. And these are basically all 
shot on video, low budget indie horror, horror movies. And uh, it's pretty cool. JR Bookwalter has been putting out some really nice releases. Honestly, really the only film that I love that he is even associated with, I think, is The Dead Next Door. I know he directed that one, but of all the Ozone and the stuff that he's put out, I'm just not really that into it. I'm not huge on like super low budget sh uh, shot on video uh, filmmaking unless it's like a straight up like stock and slash movie or like um, uh, Orloff the Mutilator. I fucking love that movie for some reason. But for the most part, like the Polonia films, I don't know. I just can't really tune into a lot of them for some reason. But we'll give these a shot. Pretty cool. Uh, box set by uh, Make Flicks. So that's, it's limited, I think, to 300, but there's still plenty available. And you can get this uh, directly from Makeflix for a lot cheaper, to be perfectly honest with you, than a lot of the other um, boutique shops out there. So shop wisely on this one, guys. You could save like 30 bucks if you buy it from Makeflix. And that's not even shouting out Amazon or anything. So all fair there. Uh, but yeah, it's a nice box set, signature edition. It says, between September 91 and March 92, producer J.R. Bookwalter embarked on the impossible. Write, shoot, edit, and direct and deliver six shot-on-video SOV features in just seven months. With budgets under 2500 each, the horror, sci-fi, thriller, and comedy movies were commissioned two at a time by executive producer David Dakotu, uh, who did Sorority Babes and the Slimeball Bolorama. He did a lot of stuff, I think Leeches. Um, and uh, for release of this fledging cinema home video label sold through a unique startup who shared video store rental profits with the distributor although, in, although initially profitable video store owners and customers ultimately turned their back on camcorder quickies by the time to go to came calling forth for a part of the uh, fourth pair of the movies an urban thriller and a western Bookwalter had done the same eventually returning in 1994 with Ozone hailed by fans and critics alike as one of the best SOV films ever made maybe I should give that one another shot um, I love The Dead Next Door I think it's a really fun film but I love zombie movies so anyways this box set includes a lot of stuff posters reversible mini posters commentary tracks vintage extras uh, original VHS versions of the films, restored movies, uh, screenplays, exclusive packaging only limited to 300, autographed by the director, of course. So that's super cool. Uh, support indie horror, whether you like it or not. Um, so yeah, that's it, guys. That being said, it's almost 11 o'clock on Friday and I still haven't eaten dinner. I made a bad, bad judgment call and got Burger King after work today and ugh. Just reminded me why I, I try really hard to stay away from that stuff. It's so bad. All night, I like I should be hungry by now. I haven't eaten in like seven, eight hours. And I'm just like, it's just I can feel it like festering in my stomach. It's just gross. But anyways, ta-ta for now. Ta-ta for now. Talk to you guys later. Peace.